Sports Radio. Here comes the siren. I want to go higher. Oh, my goodness. Cabin Sports Radio brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward back on the Cabin Radio Airwaves for another week for our one-year anniversary show. And we got a special yeah. guest in the studio. The J-Bear joins me and Unbreakable Mike Gibbons. Mike, how you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? Great. Jay, how you doing? It's the most wonderful <laughs> time of the year. Oh, boy, is it ever. Yes, we are going to give you a full rundown of, well, at least the Canadian uh, teams in the NHL preview. The NHL season starts in two days, and we could not be more excited here on Cabin Sports Radio. The CSR Podcast. Cabin Sports Radio brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward. Want to give a big shout out right off the top of the show to uh, Sport North, Kids Sport NWT, Top of the World Travel. Uh, there were several other sponsors involved, but the Champions for Children dinner happened this past weekend. I was lucky enough to be there, got to see Lanny McDonald and listen to stories from him, Billy Smith, and uh, Serge Savard. And, uh, of course, all proceeds for the Champions for Children dinner went to Kids Sport NWT, which Sport North are the facilitators of. It was a fantastic night, lots of fun. And, uh, yeah, just want to give a shout out to everyone involved for putting on such a great night and uh, a very, very entertaining night. I don't know if, uh, I don't think, were either you, you gentlemen there? I wasn't able to be there, but I did get to interview Lanny McDonald the last time he was in Yellow Knight. Yeah. Great storyteller. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. Honestly. He, uh, he walked up, uh, I had Nicole there with me, and uh, it was funny, actually, because I, I said, when I, when I was offered two tickets, I said, I'd sent her a text, and I was like, do we have plans Saturday night? And she's like, no, nah, nothing I'm aware of. I was like, okay, we got two tickets for the uh, Champions for Children gala. I assume you don't want to go? <laughs> she was like, why would you assume that? So I'm like, well, it's a sports thing, and uh, you're not a big sports thing person, but uh, no, she was very happy to go, and one of the remarks she made was, when Lanny McDonald got up and was introduced and gave a wave, she's like, what a dapper, handsome gentleman. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Is he still rocking there's, there's, oh, the stash? Oh, still rocking the oh, stash. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. He was actually asked about that. And uh, hmm. I think they, they, they asked him, like, when the last time that you didn't have a mustache was. And I think he said, like, 43 years wow. ago. Wow. Oh, my like goodness. That. With the stash. Uh, and then confirmed that he will go to his grave with that mustache awesome. on his face. Yeah. So no worries there. But, uh, yeah, Lanny was in fine form. Billy Smith was in fine form. And uh, Serge, Mc- Serge Savard, who, man, like, he looks incredible for his age. Like, not exactly a spring chicken, but, you know, he got up and was like, man, that guy is, he's looking good. He looks like he could, well, no, I'm not going to go so far as to say he could still play on the ice or anything like that, but looking very, very good for his age. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to everyone who organized that and uh, to those three fine special guests for coming up. And, of course, everyone who uh, who put up money in the live auctions, raising a bunch of money for uh, Kids Sport NWT. And uh, looking forward to following up for that and seeing how much money was raised but anyway, welcome to Cabin Sports Radio. First things first, gentlemen. First of all, want to introduce uh, Unbreakable Mike Gibbons, always joining me on Cabin Sports Radio. Very special guest tonight, the J-Bear, joining us because he is every bit as excited for the opening of the NHL season as we are. Absolutely. Lifetime Leafs fan and uh, longtime sufferer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, unfortunately, yeah, we are, we are all in the same boat there, and we will get to the Toronto Maple Leafs there, as usual, is lots to talk about. But first things first, it's uh, it's our one-year anniversary here on Cabin Sports mm, Radio. Congratulations, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> Thought I'd, you know, have a little, I love it. Have a little celebration. It's a good Why soundtrack. Not? Yeah. A little cool in the gang. Yeah. <laughs> one year. One year young. Of wow. Cabin Sports Radio. We did it, Mike. That went by like that. Right? I did not think that was a year. Made it this I far. I think it hit me. Obviously, you knew. You put this lovely package together. Oh, this is Ollie. Oh, okay. No. But I think it hit me <laughs> when I sat down. I was like, wow, we did a, I recall doing an NHL 
preview Mm -hmm. last year. Yep. And here we are. Yeah, exactly one year ago. We were doing our very first show. and uh, We ran really long. (laughs) We ran ran long. (laughs) Really, really long. We could not shut up. Yeah. We'll see if we've learned anything a year later. Don't put any stock in anything, by the way. (laughs) We were really bad. I mean, it's the NHL regular season tee-up show. Like, chances are we're going to be yapping nonstop again. So, you know, a year later, we yeah. haven't learned anything here on Capitol. <laughs> It'd be School funny Radio. if we made this a tradition and are just as bad with our <laughs> predictions every single time. Well, maybe that's one thing we've learned, is yeah. that we just shouldn't make predictions right. anymore. Yeah. If our 2019 Stanley Cup predictions yeah. and follow-up were any indication, we just shouldn't yeah. make predictions. I was going to say, because we doubled down. We had really bad regular season predictions for Canadian squads. Yes. No, they weren't that bad. They were mostly... On par. We didn't give the Flames any love whatsoever, but I nope. don't think a lot of people did. No. But then we doubled down and made some really bad Stanley Cup playoff predictions. Yeah. But I don't think anyone saw all those upsets coming, but. Yeah, no. in our defense. Yeah. We have no merit. I made a bet that the Leafs would finish with more points than the Calgary Flames, okay. and I thought it was easy money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid up that bet. Yeah. <sighs> so you will fit in just perfectly on yeah. this show then, Jay. Do not make predictions, mm-hmm. do not make bets, and uh, and we should sound okay. But anyway, yes, this is obviously a big show. Uh, the NHL regular season starts on Wednesday. As we've talked before, Mike, here on the show, uh, fall is just... The arguably the greatest time mm-hmm. for North American professional sports. You got the NHL is starting up. The NBA is a week or two away. Yep. NFL is started. CFL is getting down towards playoff time. MLB playoffs are just around the corner. Like there is just everything going yeah. on in the sports world. But of course, we are <laughs> most excited about hockey. We, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not ashamed of that. No, not at all. We're Canadian. Look, at the, the, look at the market we're in. That's right. So we're going to do much like we did uh, last year, the first ever Cabin Sports Radio episode. We're going to do a full season preview. We're going to go coast to coast mm-hmm. and, uh, well, go against our better judgment and maybe make some predictions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, be, why be any different than the, the pros, right? right? The TSN oh, exactly. guys get it wrong all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sports right. guys get it wrong all the time. That's right. And they get paid. Yeah. Big bucks. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. Uh, so we may as well, I know we all want to start in Toronto, but let's start the furthest east and start with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, of course, not, uh, there, there was a interesting start to their off season, the notorious, uh, offer sheet s- situation with, mm. uh, Sebastian Aho of the Ca- Carolina Hurricanes. That was the first time we had really heard the word offer sheet used That's in right. quite some time at least in a in a serious capacity the fact that someone actually did offer sheet a restricted free agent we hadn't seen that really happen in i think since the 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 uh, the Dustin Penner situation with the Edmonton Oilers way back in the oh, day oh right um and so it's always been you know a looming threat since then and then the Montreal Canadiens attempted to offer sheet Sebastian Aho Carolina Hurricanes said, no, none of that nonsense. Mm-hmm. We are signing our star center, keeping him around. So the Montreal Canadiens, as it turns out, are, do not really look a whole lot different from last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got their their depth chart up in front of me here. It's projected that their starting four lines on forward are going to be Tatar, Deno, and Gallagher, Lekkonen, Domi, and Suzuki. Pretty cool that Nick Suzuki has uh, has apparently made the jump, so that'll be interesting to see him uh, in his first season with the big club. Uh, then the third line, Paul Byron, Akakaniemi, and Wheel. Then Cousins, Poling, and Armia on the fourth line. Defense, Mete, Weber, uh, Sherratt. That was actually one of their big uh, additions was bringing Ben Sherratt over from the, uh, the Winnipeg Jets, which mm. will add a little bit of toughness to the back end. Uh, add a little bit of uh, defensive and veteran stability. Uh, so Sherratt, Petrie on the second line, then Kulak and Fleury on the third line. And of course, Carey Price, uh, starting goaltender and uh, new backup Jeff Kincaid, shoring things up a little bit, which, again, probably not a bad move for the Montreal Canadiens. We all know that Carey Price, when he's healthy, is still probably the best goaltender in the entire world, but that is when he's healthy. Yeah, I don't think you want Carey Price starting more than 60 games. Yeah. I mean, really a uh, really kind of a similar situation to something that the, the Toronto Maple Leafs knew that they wanted to address, which was load management for, for Frederick Anderson. It's become a popular phrase 
in uh, Toronto mm-hmm. and pro sports circles north of Can- north of Canada or north of the border rather. Uh, load management, we all know it is a big thing, and it, it, it's proven year after year. Like goalies <clears throat> get burnt out yeah. if they play, yeah, more than sixty five, seventy games. Even the best starting goalie. You play that many games, you're going to get burnt out. Mm-hmm. You've got to have a good backup, and the Montreal Canadiens did just that. They went out and got a pretty good backup in Jeff Kincaid. I think other experts, like ourselves out there, are, are offering some predictions uh, ahead of the season, and that was sort of one of them, is is keeping goalies fresh towards the, the end of the season. I want to say it was Dubnik in, in Minnesota who had, I think, 66 starts, which I think was the most of any goalie uh, in the league last yeah. year. Anderson, the Leafs relied on way too much, and we saw him not at his best come playoff time. You saw the opposite when they played the Bruins. Tuka Rask uh, split the crease with Halak over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. Come playoff time, he was pretty sharp. Um, So, you know, some experts already suggesting um, maybe we won't see any goalies at all play more than than 60 games over the course of the entire season because you want to make sure people are fresh um, when it matters most. That being said... If you do have a franchise goalie like Carey Price, you want him in the crease as much as possible because he's going to help you make that playoff push yeah. in the first place. But, um, yeah, obviously he's he's the backbone of that entire team. Will be interesting also to see what happens if there are, if if anything can actually be made of all these Drouin rumors. There always seem to be rumors circling around Jonathan Drouin and his, his future, but I don't know what their depth is like at the at the wing position. Sort of another season, I think he put up around 50 points last year and, and really hasn't quite cracked that ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, so interesting to see what, what what plays out with him. But he's always seems to be at the center of these rumors for, for whatever reason. But um, and, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how high the ceiling is for this team. Are they a playoff team in a really competitive Atlantic division and Eastern mm-hmm. Conference? You know Boston's going to be in the mix with uh, the Lightning, the Leafs. Florida, I think, is another team that takes a step in the right direction. They will probably be in the dance. So how much room does that leave for a team like the Montreal Canadiens, who appear to be in a quote-unquote rebuild? It'll be interesting to they see. They don't use that word. Mike. Yeah, no. no, It's a bad word in sports. <laughs> the R word. Um, but, and, I mean, it, it will be really interesting, obviously, like you mentioned. Uh, as I was running down the roster there, yeah, one name that was notably absent was the name of uh, Jonathan Drouin. So we will see what happens there. It, it'd be interesting if you could ever come into a season where you don't have Jonathan Drouin being some sort of question mark. It would be yeah, really yeah. interesting to see, you know, wherever he was playing, even, you know, with with Tampa before that, he was he was supposed to be a star player yeah, by yeah. now. And then, uh, you know, and then the things played out the way it did there. He ends up in Montreal. He's still a question mark yeah. at the time when a guy of his stature really should be starting to take shape of the kind of player that he's going to be. He should start, he should start peaking mm-hmm. really right now. So we'll see what happens there. But I remember last year when we did this show, we were pretty much just brushing the Montreal Canadiens yeah. aside. There was there was no hope in our mind that the Montreal Canadiens were going to do anything. And if you looked down their roster, they really shouldn't have done anything. Yet they finished the season, what, two points <laughs> out of a playoff spot? Yeah. yeah. And the Habs optimists, what they will tell you is, look, they did finish just outside the playoffs. They didn't have a healthy Shea Weber. Yeah. They didn't have yeah. Juan at his best. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if he can be at his best, and if Shea Weber can be healthy, they they think the you know Habs fans and the organization think they should be a playoff team. Yeah, yeah. and along with the, uh, the, the 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 few like you know very very minor additions that they made in the off season, but uh, adding Ben Sherratt, I think will yeah. make a difference on the back end. You know, it takes a little bit of that youth and inexperience that they had last year. Uh, being consistently on their their defensive core and gives them someone who's a bit more rock solid. Nick Suzuki, you don't know exactly what you got there. If he can, uh, you know, have a have a good rookie year, even you know, put up anywhere between like fifteen and twenty goals, I think the Montreal Canadiens would be overjoyed with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then you got another year of uh, of of um, another year of seasoning to see what uh, what Kakeniemi can do. So, you know, he's starting, according to this depth chart with uh, John Liu of TSN, they have him slotted in to start as the third-line center. 
he's a guy that, you know, could very well, depending on how he comes out of the gates, by the end of the year, maybe he's your first line guy. Who knows? Like, it, it's tough to say if you think he's ready to, you know, face other teams, top tier guys. Like, is he ready to go head to head against uh, Sidney Crosby, mm-hmm. Connor McDavid, uh, you know, Steven Stamkos, these types of guys? That's tough to say. But at the same time, you don't know unless you put him there. And I think it's not crazy to think that Max Domi might improve yeah. again yeah. this year. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, obviously. Uh, a pretty big wild card for yeah. Montreal Canadiens coming into this year, but uh, definitely lots of reasons for uh, for optimism at mm. the very least. If you are a Habs fan, uh, moving slightly further west, we take a look at the Ottawa Senators. I think much like last year, we didn't give the Ottawa Senators mm. really any hope of doing anything positive last year. That was probably the one prediction we made that was one hundred percent accurate. Yeah. I don't know if I give them much different of a chance this season. Mm-hmm. Um, again, they they have they made some changes in the off season. They picked up uh, well, like four former Leafs: Connor Brown, yeah, uh, Nikita Zaitsev, of course, uh, Ron Hainsey, and I think they're oh Tyler Ennis, yeah. of course, too. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah, they're kind of a. Uh, they're kind of the the Toronto reject yes. that just moved <laughs> yeah. slightly further northeast. Can this we call year. them that? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, I think that's fine. You know, and if anything, it just gives them fuel. So that if you, if you're an Ottawa Senators fan or you're a, you're a player for the Ottawa Senators, you're coming into this year, you know, there's no expectations. Mm. Everyone thinks you're going to be a basement team. You can use that to your advantage. Yeah, no pressure. There's yeah. no pressure in Ottawa. Oh, exactly. To, yeah. To Jay's point, when we were talking about the Habs. Weird to think they only finished four points behind the Leafs. Yeah. Um, the Senators Scary finished uh, 34 points <laughs> behind. So uh, dead last in the NHL, 30, 31st in the entire league. The story heading into last off se- or last regular season, of course, was w- the fire sale that we knew was coming. They yes. were going to offload Duchesne. We saw him go to Columbus, who's yep. now moved on. Uh, and then we saw Mark Stone go to Vegas, where he signed an eight-year deal. And prior to that, they had seen Eric Carlson depart. So Mm -hmm. the writing was on the wall this time of year, last year. Um, Different story in that we probably won't see that same type of caliber of RFAs uh, hit the open market. Um, But let's not uh, let's not sugarcoat things here. 31st last year, they will probably be in the basement again. Some personnel changes. Again, I'll throw around the R word. This is a team that is firmly committed to a rebuild. Yeah. And I don't think things are going to be too rosy in the nation's capital anytime soon, but you hope they start trending in the right direction at least. Yeah. At least this year, if they finish in the basement, they'll have a better shot of maybe actually having the first round pick. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Optimism. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Something to look forward to. Uh, Just taking a quick look down their their depth chart. The opening night roster is predicted to be uh, Kachuk, White, Brown, Duclair, Pajot, Batherson, uh, Chlapik. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Who? <laughs> Tierney and uh, Bobby Ryan on the third line. Uh, Bobby, yeah, third. Oh, Excuse yeah. Me. All right. Uh, Tyler Ennis, uh, Artem Anisimov, and uh, some combination of either uh, Sabarin, who is... Who has made some headlines in yeah, preseason? Yeah, he has. He's had a he's had an eventful offseason. Yeah, sorry, uh, preseason. Yeah, and has apparently won himself a job on the team. So, yeah. so good for him. Uh, it's either going to be him or possibly Michael Bodker, which in, in the opposite way, man, that is a guy who has fallen from grace. Yeah, like, he was a, he was like a first round draft pick former, right? Like, yeah, now he's just scrapping to make a club and not a great club. No, no. Anyway, uh, taking a look at the defense. On uh, the first pairing, you got uh, Shabbat, Zaitsev, Branstrom, Demello, Borowicki, and Hainsey, and then in goal, of course, uh, Anderson and Nilsson. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I wow. mean, it, it, I'm <laughs> really happy. I'm really happy that the Leafs gave them two of their blue liners. I will say <laughs> one positive note. I believe was it an eight year extension? They they resigned Shabbat. Yeah, uh, who, which was huge. For yes, them. yes, who figures to be a huge piece of this team going forward. And another year out of out of Brady Kachuk, who uh, missed some time last year. Seventy one games played, forty five points. You'll you'll get you'd think more production from him, but but for them this off season re signing Shabbat, I think was a huge win for them. Uh, he figures to be in the mix. I think going pers- forward, yeah. And I think personally, this is a 
kind of a possible turning point year for uh, for Anthony DeClaire. You know, he's one of these guys that had a lot of fanfare coming in. It seemed like it seemed like every year he started uh, when he was with the uh, the Arizona Coyotes to start his career, he would have one highlight real goal and everyone would be like, "Oh man, like look at this guy. Like he's he's something else. He's going to have a good year." And then he would kind of he kind of disappear after that. I, I think last year he had some uh, some injury problems that uh, that hampered him. Uh, throughout the year in Columbus was part of that Duchesne trade mm. brought him over to Ottawa but I really think he has got some top tier talent yeah and so it'll be interesting to see if he can make a stand he's going to be given a great opportunity on this team like he's going to be a top six guy yep so that's you know as good an opportunity as you can possibly ask for and so I, I but I think this might be one of those seasons for him it's like you either got to prove that you are one of these top six guys, or you got to find some other role to fill. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a big year for him personally. Uh, all right, let's head a little further west and get to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, we were all waiting for this. We've all been waiting all off season, and there's been plenty of drama to fill that off season. Mm-hmm. In case we happen to get bored, of course, there was the whole Mitch Marner contract that uh, dragged on and on and on forever. It finally got done. Mitch Marner is here for the next uh, six years with the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is signed, and the roster is set. And then, of course, he had the whole Austin Matthews situation. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Who may yeah. be named captain in the coming days. Yeah, apparently that didn't change anything. Yeah. I don't see how it couldn't have. Yeah. Makes him look like a bit of a goofball. That was kind of my my one takeaway from it. it th- th- in no situation does he come out of this looking better. He just... Kind of looks like a jackass. Yeah. Um, and with, with this whole captaincy decision looming, eh, not great timing for him or the organization. But like you said, apparently it hasn't changed anything. No, and I mean, I think really the 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 unfortunate thing for... I mean, there's obviously lots of unfortunate things for Austin Matthews personally to consider. Because uh, if nothing else, this is really embarrassing for him. Mm-hmm. You know, like it it's... It's not a good look on, on on him in general. It's it's something where you can't exactly. I don't think the Toronto Maple Leafs can realistically have this looming over them and say, you know what, eh, he's our guy. Yeah, he's our captain. Uh, no, I don't think they can. I don't think they should. No, I don't. I don't know if I was, and I don't know if this is personal, but I don't know if I was looking at some at him as someone who exudes captaincy to me anyways i think naturally someone like john Tavares obviously oozes that just yeah. given that he was the captain in new york for five plus years yeah before coming over to toronto that it, he just fits the mold yeah. for what what you think a stereotypical captain would be if you're looking in-house like someone who's been in the franchise even longer i would say someone like morgan riley yep. exudes what i think to be a, of a captain more than someone like austin Matthews, who has all the talent in the world and up to this point that we know of hadn't had any run-ins with law enforcement or anything like that. I just, I, I he didn't really fit the mold for me anyways. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously this latest story doesn't put him in the best of light. Do you know what I don't understand is why Mitch Marner isn't more part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. He's been their leading point getter for two years in a row. He seems to get along with everybody on the team. Mm-hmm. They all seem to love him and he seems to have a good relationship there. You don't have to make the choice between the Tavares uh, Matthews, which seems to be kind of this split yeah. or divide, yeah. And uh, he, he's the hometown boy. He seems to be comfortable with the media, so I I don't understand yeah. why he's not part of the conversation. And now he's in the picture for six more years. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. it is interesting that you say that because that seems to be sort of the narrative that he's in this sort of second tier of of captain candidates, if you will. It seems like it's really between Tavares and Matthews, mm-hmm. and even Babcock himself said. It'll be obvious. Once it comes out, it'll be obvious. Yeah. You guys will know. It's like, well, there's a couple candidates right now. <laughs> I'm sure it'll make sense, I'm sure, and I'm sure everyone will be happy with the situation, but yeah, it is interesting. That quote makes me think it's going to be Tavares, because yeah. to me, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. anybody else, it's not obvious, right? Matthews yeah. is not obvious because of what's happened. Uh, Morgan Riley, to me, is not quite obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Marner hasn't been part of the conversation, right. so he isn't obvious, so the only, to me, the only obvious yeah yeah choice is 
Tavares, and it's Tavares or Matthews. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I happen, I fully agree with you. I mean, John Tavares is the only, the only one that you would label as an obvious decision, given that he's been a captain before. He's, you know, assuming that that Austin Matthews was also kind of like groomed for this situation from from a younger age. We know that John Tavares was an, an exceptional status player in the OHL played when he was when he was 15 years old so you know that he's been in the spotlight and you know groomed for this moment from that age mm. uh and he's already done it he did it for for seven years in new york yeah you know so there's just there's no there is no other obvious choice mm-hmm. other than john Tavares. i mean maybe like you say if uh if this austin matthews situation has become too much of a distraction which i would argue without question that it has mm. Morgan Riley is the only real other option aside from, like you say, Mitch Marner. Why isn't he considered? But he's not he's part of the conversation. Not. He hasn't yeah. been part of the conversation. So if you want it to be someone that you you drafted yourself, you brought up through your system, he has developed into an elite player and an on ice leader. Morgan Riley is, yeah, the only other option. Mm-hmm. But I do agree with you. Yeah, it is, and and it's funny because even me myself, when you mentioned it. I I haven't had Mitch Marner in that mix in my head either, yeah. and and not even just as like a fantasy thing. It's just been like he's just not part of the conversation. And I and I almost wonder if it's just like a little a little player thing. Hmm. I guess. And like you could say, well, it's his youth, but Matthews is young. Yeah. yeah. Like if there's a year between them, not even. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And as far as we know, Mitch Marner hasn't pulled his pants down and, and mooned <laughs> anyone in public. So. He's ahead of him there, too. And I think yeah. him and Matthews, they, they sort of had offsetting, um, impressive playoff performances. I think mm. the first time around, uh, the two years ago against Boston, Mitch Marner was very impressive. Yeah. Not quite as impressive this this past playoffs, where Matthews elevated his game a little bit. He faced a little bit of criticism uh, the year before for not playing up to his full potential. Right. So maybe, maybe that is a factor, but I mean, the... It really, to me, the two are pretty even. Um, but yeah, interesting that he's just sort of fallen out of the mix. It seems, and his co- his name isn't in the conversation quite as much. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's not too broken up about no, it. He's, no, uh, he's he's making lot. his money. He's you know doing okay. He's doing all right. Uh, so the uh, Maple Leafs roster breaks down as follows: They've currently on MapleLeafHotStove.com. They've got uh, Austin Matthews as the starting center with Andreas Janssen and William Nylander on his wings. John Tavares, second line center with Kasperi Kapanen and Mitch Marner. And then we've got, uh, yeah. And then we got Alexander Kerfoot, who of course came over and it's part of the uh, Nazem Kadri trade that Mm -hmm. also brought uh, Tyson Berry. Uh, You got Ilya, and I don't know how to pronounce his name either. Jay? Uh, Mikheyev? Mikheyev? Yeah. Who's had a very good camp. And preseason, I'm told. Yeah, yeah. Um, he looked impressive. Yeah, yeah. So you got Mikheyev, Kerfoot, and Trevor Moore, and then uh, Freddie Gauthier, Dmitry Timoshov, and Jason Spezza on the fourth line. Nick Shore looking like he may possibly be the odd man mm-hmm. out, but I think you're going to see a lot of roster juggling, kind of game by game. Hyman's still on the shelf too, so he'll yeah. probably squeeze back onto the math. Yeah, use line. Um, I mean, he'll Nylander. factor in there somewhere, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and whether then, or not they want to re, you know, reunite him with Austin Matthews. Yeah, um, yeah. And then knows? you have some some shuffling in the bottom six, but that that top two, whoa, yeah. Well, and, and Hyman being back in will depend on how things go with uh, Andreas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if if someone were to tell me that at the start of this regular season they were able to get Mitch Marner, Andreas Janssen, and Kasperi Kapanen all on the roster. I would have been very happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, you know, with all the talk of all the offer sheets, and apparently Marner did get two, mm. um, I thought maybe those two, because they would have been signed to much, much lesser deals, were probably the more likely candidates for offer sheets if a team could come in and scoop them. So I was really happy that they, they took care of those two signings first um, and then obviously worked out the numbers to get Mitch under as well because I, I think they can absolutely be difference makers and and Janssen's got good chemistry uh whatever line he ends up on yeah. and, and and if Kapanen can slot in with with Matthews and Nylander who I'm absolutely expecting a bounce back season from with a full training camp full preseason looking really good um in preseason too 
it looks like. So uh, expect some pretty good things for that line. And I think our D is stronger this year than last year. Oh, I definitely. really do. Yeah, no yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, quick run through the defense. Morgan Riley and Cody Cece projected to be the top line on D. Jake Muzzin and Tyson Berry, the second line. And then uh, rookie Rasmus Sandin, who is a bit of a surprise making this roster. Sandman. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, Martin Marinchin projected to be number six. Could be anywhere. You could see him slotted out any time between uh, Timothy Lilgren and uh, Justin Hall, who are also... Dermot, too? Uh, I think he's injured, yeah. he's injured as well. I think he's yeah. supposed to be back in November. Yeah. 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 So and yeah. So I mean, he'll be in the top six. I would think it would be Sandine and uh, Dermot yeah. on on the bottom pairing there. That's a pretty good six. That's pretty good. Yeah. Freddie Anderson, of course, uh, back as the starting goaltender, and then uh, Michael Hutchinson, who looked really impressive in preseason, mm-hmm. uh, beating out Michael Neuverth out of his uh, pro tri- pro, pro tryout contract uh, as the uh, backup goaltender. Feel a little bit bad for Neuvirth, right? He gets the chance to prove he's he, they they're giving him a fair shot. Gets injured again, yeah, yeah. and then Hutchinson uh, comes in and shuts out the Habs, and that's the decision. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you know, Hutchinson they brought him in kind of on an emergency type situation last year uh, when Freddie Anderson got injured for a short span of time. I think he played about five games and looked. Looked pretty good, you know. He's a looked, solid backup. Yeah, he is. He is a solid backup. So if he can, uh, if he can improve on what Garrett Sparks was able to do last year, which wasn't a whole won't lot, be hard. Won't be hard to improve <laughs> yeah, on Sparks. Hopefully, shouldn't be too difficult. And uh, yeah, take some of that workload off of Freddie Anderson. Uh, the Leafs should be should be set up pretty well mm-hmm. for this season. So we have talked through more than half of the show already about the east we are going to take a break and then we will run through the west as the cabin sports radio nhl regular season preview show continues the cabin sports radio podcast brought to you by sport north moving sport forward Welcome back to Cabin Sports Radio, brought to you by Sport North. Moving Sport Forward, continuing with our NHL regular season uh, opening day preview. We move towards the Winnipeg Jets, who also had a uh, pretty interesting, exciting offseason. Mostly for what I would call the wrong reasons. Yeah, uh, Losing players in the offseason. You got uh, Dustin Bufflin, one of their star players, who is still contemplating his future, isn't quite sure what he's going to do yet. They're waiting around to see what happens there, but they did get some good news over the weekend as they re-signed both Patrick Laine and Kyle Connor uh, for this year and Patrick Laine for this year and next year. Two-year, essentially, bridge deal, 6.75 mil per, and Kyle Connor re-signed for seven years, 50 million, 7.14 her. It's almost like Kyle Connor's camp was just waiting to see what Patrick Laine signed. Yeah. For. And we'll just take slightly more a little than bit that. More. Just a little bit more. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so that'll only strengthen Patrick Laine's thoughts that it's all about who you play with because, of course, Kyle Connor has been on largely on the top line the last two years with Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. And look at that. He just got that much more mm. money. Um, but anyway, it, uh, it's an interesting year for the Winnipeg Jets, of course. They are coming off of back-to-back Stanley Cup playoff appearances. Uh, Two years ago, went to the conference final and lost to the Vegas Golden Knights. And then last year, got knocked out in the first round, albeit by the eventual Stanley Cup winners Mm. in the St. Louis Blues. Very tough series there, but definitely a very disappointing finish to the 2018-2019 season for the Winnipeg Jets. And they're not exactly well set up for a bounce back year as of right now. Like we mentioned, they got their two stars, their two restricted free agents back that, you know, there was a little bit of question mark coming up uh, around coming up until now. But they, uh, the question mark now moves to the back end. Yes. You lost Jacob Truba. Mm-hmm. Now, you can say whether or not that was a, the wise, a wise decision or not. Regardless, you lose Jacob Truba, a guy who logs 20-plus minutes a night for you. Uh, you lost Ben Sherratt, a guy who is a great defensive defenseman and has been a rock on the team for the past couple seasons. Mm-hmm. You lost Tyler Myers, who is a veteran presence and a guy who could inject some offense. You could play him on the power play. You could play him on the penalty kill. And as of right now, you still don't have Dustin Bufflin, and you're not sure of where his head is at. Mm-hmm. A lot of question marks on the defense. 
I think even if Bufflin comes back, even if he decides not to retire, I mean, is he ready to play? Yeah. And is his, I mean, the first time he has a bad injury, the first time he he takes a bad hit and has some concussion, you know, symptoms. Yeah. Is he like, you know what? (laughs) And conditioning, I think, is a really good point. We touched on it a little bit last week. You mentioned they had an exciting offseason. They had an exciting week. Like, yeah. This all happened in the span of a couple days. Yeah. Um, and we still don't have a development on the whole Dustin Bufflin front. But it is interesting you mentioned conditioning because he has had a, a couple off seasons now where he's come back to camp and he's put on some weight. Yeah. Uh, this is going back more so to his, his Chicago days. Um, but yeah, you, you, you wonder if that's a factor too. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. The questions now are surrounding the blue line, which was when they had those, those deep playoff runs, that was the formidable part of their roster. Mm-hmm. They were a tough, big, strong, physical team, skilled team that you, you didn't really want to run into come playoff time. Um, bowed out to the eventual champs uh, last year, so that's that's respectable, and they yeah. went deep the year before. Um, so nice to see that they've uh, firmed up their, their forward group, but yeah, like you said, I think all the question marks now are on the back end. Not so much in goal, uh, Connor Hellbuck is is a very reliable option in mm-hmm. in the crease, um, but that's a really different blue line that we're looking at now. When we when we scan down the depth chart, um, the offense should be pretty good, and and they'll be able to hold their own. But they're in a really competitive Central Division where other teams are getting better. The Stars are going to be good. The the defending champs, the Blues are going to be there. The yeah. Predators are always dangerous. Um, it's a tough division. And they're sort of staying afloat right now. So mm-hmm. they could absolutely still be a playoff team. I, I expect them to, to be in the mix. Yeah. But they might be fighting for one of the lower seeds at this point. Yeah. I mean, luckily for them, the, 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 the up front, they remain pretty much the same as they were last year. Their top two lines are going to be exactly the mm-hmm. same now that Kyle Connor and Patrick Lyonet are signed and back in, back on the roster. You're going to have, of course, Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler. Probably Kyle Connor alongside them again. Uh, and then you'll probably have on the second line uh, Brian Little, Patrick Line, and Nick Ehlers, who have been, you know, pretty consistent lines yeah. over the last two years. You'll have uh, likely Jack Roslevic on the third line at center. It'll be interesting to see what he can do in his uh, his sophomore year, his first full year last year, and uh, looked, you know, had definitely some flashes of brilliance with the Winnipeg Jets, and I think he can take another step forward. You got uh, a couple pretty uh, pretty good uh, vets in Matthew Perot's depth for depth forwards and uh, Gabriel Bork, who mm-hmm. they added in the off season. A little more veteran leadership in Mark Latestu, who they also added to the lineup. And uh, then he got uh, a couple young guys looking to make a bit of a statement in uh, in Mason Appleton. He played a little bit last year, probably saw, I'm going to say, 10 to 15 games or something like that. Yeah. And he just, you know, he looked like a good player, a guy who you can kind of slot in anywhere and he's not going to look out of place. Smooth skating player, uh, you know, knows where to be, good positionally. Uh, just one of those guys that you you could probably plug in and you're not going to he's not going to look again out of place anywhere and then of course you got Adam Lowry Andrew Kopp uh this is a it, it it's a lineup that has been largely together for the better part of the last 3 years so you've got lots of consistency up front but like we said defense yeah. is going to be interesting uh Josh Morrissey their leader on defense now whether he wanted to be or not, he is without question thrust into yeah. that leadership role now without the likes of uh, Jacob Truba, Tyler Myers, or Dustin Bufflin. Uh, Nathan Beaulieu uh, comes back, and he's a guy that I felt like they didn't really have plans on re-signing. Mm. But then after uh, Ben Sherratt right. departed to Montreal, Tyler Myers departed to uh, to Vancouver. I think they suddenly were like, okay, we... <laughs> we need a blue line. Yeah, we need a blue line. Yeah. we got to retain some players here. So he comes back. He'll get more of an opportunity this year. They've got a couple other uh, young guys who looked really good in preseason that uh, I think may be on the verge of, of making a statement with this team. Uh, Dmitry Kulikov, who is a guy who I think can... If you need him to be your five six guy, he mm. can do that pretty well. But I think ideally, you don't want to have Kulikov in your your top five. Yeah. definitely not your top four. Uh, uh, Pionk, who's the, the guy that they got back in the uh, Jacob Truba trade, yep. 
be interesting to see what he can do. It'll be also be really interesting to see what uh, Tucker Poolman can do. He's a young defenseman who's been in their system for the last few years, so he will be looking to uh, make the best of his opportunity this year with the big club. And then, of course, in goal, as you mentioned, Connor Hellebuck returning for his uh, third year as the starting goalie, and uh, Brassois, uh, who was really good as their backup last yeah. year. Like His numbers were actually comparable to Hellebuck's. And, uh, and so, yeah, very solid uh, goaltending duo. But they're going to have to be even better with uh, a very young and inexperienced blue line in front of them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move further west to Calgary. Uh, The Calgary Flames also had some very good news uh, just this past weekend as Matthew Kachuk joined the parade of restricted free agents saying, all right, enough is enough. (laughs) It's time to play some hockey. He signed a three-year, $21 million deal with the Flames, $7 million per. And I just wanted to do a side note. How do you how do you think of those are comparing to Mitch Marner's contract? They look like a bargain. <laughs> they do. They look like a bargain now. The other one, of course, that we didn't mention was uh, Miko Rantanen. Yeah. Also, uh, was re-signed by the Colorado Avalanche to a six-year, fifty-five and a half million dollar contract, nine point two five average per season, mm-hmm. and that's probably the most comparable. Right. And yeah. who would have thought that nine point two million would look like a bargain? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it looks pretty good compared to ten point nine. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, Braden Point, too. A very, oh, a very friendly deal. Yeah. Br- Braden Point better produce, or he left a lot of money yeah. on the table. Yeah. I don't even know, and, and we talked about this uh, also last week, I don't even know if you can really compare, fairly compare Braden Point's contract to that. Because that was a, I, I feel like that's just such a different situation yeah. where... I think they sat down and said, do you want to play or not? Yeah. Basically, yeah. Because it's like... Nobody is going, well, I mean, maybe some teams are going to take their chance and offer she you, but is it worth giving up four first round draft picks for Braden points? Yeah. No. I don't know that it is, you know, and, and, and uh, realistically, it's probably tough for Braden point and his, uh, his agent to, uh, to refute that. So mm-hmm. I think it's exactly like you said, they must've just sat down and said, this is what we can afford to offer you. I'm and can't like, show yeah. you the numbers. Yeah, here, here's the books. Here's everything. We're not making this yeah. up. We have no money. Here's what we can afford to offer you. Do you want to play or not? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like it's almost unfair to compare Braden Point. Right. Uh, but Miko Rantanen, uh, yeah. there's an argument to be made there for comparing, you know, back to back 80 point seasons for him. Uh, yeah, a lot of comparables there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, then well, we'll let uh, we'll let. There's a lot enough noise out mm-hmm. there, I guess, already. But I had to bring it up. Just One thing to, to sort of keep in mind, and and I don't understand it fully, but all these sort of market dynamics about, uh, you know, for instance, uh, one selling point for for a squad like Tampa would be uh, quality of life, like where where you're living in Florida, where right. the quality of life is better. Right. Uh, states where there are no income tax, like in Dallas, that's one way that they can attract mm-hmm. marquee free agents. Then you've got the massive markets like Toronto, Chicago, New York, Boston, uh, where they can pay salaries heavily with signing bonuses and, yeah. and work the books that way. And They're endorsement these, deals yeah, are right at your doorstep. Yeah, if you yeah. want to be in the biggest market, you're going to get more endorsements. Yeah. Um, that type of thing. So there are, there are other ways that management and ownership groups can sort of flex themselves and, and attract marquee free agents. So. Maybe that came into play some some shape or form with this uh, with this Braden Point deal because yeah, on paper it looks like an absolute bargain for the Lightning and not so good if you're a Maple Leafs fan compared to Mitch Marner's contract which was which was quite hefty. Yeah. But um, but so, that's it. All the RFAs. Yeah, are, they're locked up. All locked up. Yeah. yeah. So of course, any Calgary Flames fans listening now are like, "How did you guys bring this back to talking yeah. about the Toronto Matthew?" Movie? That was Come my. On now. That was my uh, segue. We're talking about Kachuk again. <laughs> Boom. Signed. <laughs> so, yeah, Matthew Kachuk uh, signed. Good to go. Uh, the, the Calgary Flames in general, again, looking more or less pretty similar to last year's uh, Flames roster. Of course, uh, big differences being that they the big trade with the Edmonton Oilers that... I don't think anyone yeah. saw it coming until it happened. So if you want to talk the flames and salaries, let's talk about Milan Lucic. Yeah, yeah. Oh. and oh. what I don't, I still don't understand what happened there. I, I really don't. <sighs> they want some grit, I suppose. Some what? <laughs> some grit. They want some grit at the forward position on their whatever he ends up on the third line. I guess. Yeah, Fourth and, and line. you know what? I mean, like 
fair enough. Yeah. I, I don't know if Milan Lucic is is the way to go uh, because that's a lot of money to pay for grit and not a whole lot else. Yeah, twenty for points sl- last year. Slow old grit. Yeah, yeah. But like the the thing is, you know, the the Calgary Flames were obviously, you know, they had a great regular season last year. They were projected to go. A, di- a distance in the playoffs. Mm. They lost in the first round to the Colorado Avalanche. And a big reason for that was because you had guys like Johnny Goudreau getting pushed around. Yeah. They were yeah. getting mugged out there, essentially. Mm-hmm. Colorado knew that this is the guy that we have to, we have to shut down. Yeah. They went after him. They did exactly that. And the Flames didn't really have an answer for it. And I guess paying $6 million for grits... Yeah. <laughs> Is their answer for it. So, yeah, James Neal headed to Edmonton. Milan Lucic came back to Calgary. And that will be an experiment. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's just set up so badly because I think, you know, McDavid can make Neal better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I don't know that anybody on Calgary will make Lucic better. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how he reports to camp, too. Even even players like... uh, uh, Crosby and Ovechkin have both cut weight in this offseason mm. to be faster, which is kind of scary to think about. That is, yep. um, so if he's you know showing up to camp at two thirty again and expects to play the same style of hockey we've become accustomed to seeing him play, I don't know how that helps yeah. the Calgary Flames too much if he's not even able to to keep up with his line mates. The Flames have a really good top six, yeah. a really one of the best top six in all of hockey. Uh, they've got the reigning Norris Trophy. Winner, um, they've got a good blue line. Um, some questions like they did in the, the lead-up to last year as well in the, the goaltender position. So, But, I mean, when you have when you finish with the best record in the Western Conference, as they did last year, and have a really disappointing first-round exit, yeah. that's going to invite some changes, and I guess it was seen by the management group they needed some some grit. Obviously, Lucic adds that, yeah. but is he able to, to keep up with his line mates and produce in other meaningful ways? He had 20 points last season. Yeah. That's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, especially at the the contract that he's got right now. So we talked about this when it happened. I, I much prefer this trade from an Oilers standpoint, but yeah. maybe maybe he's able to inject something. I, I guess one way to break it down, uh, to put a positive spin on it from the Calgary Flames standpoint, is that they were first the, the best team in the West last year, mm-hmm. essentially without James Neal. Yeah. Because he was... Not good last true. year Very and true. essentially absent for most of the season. So I guess they figure, well, he didn't add anything anyway. Yeah. Let's trade him for what we know we need based on our playoff performance last year, which is grit. Yeah. And then even if Milan Lucic is completely absent, you're no further behind. Yeah. You know, so I guess that's that's one way of looking at it. Uh, the other big change being uh, that they brought um, gold. Uh, what Mike Smith went to Edmonton. Mm hmm. Which goaltender was it that came to Calgary? Talbot. Yes. Yeah. Tal. Yeah. So they basically did a swap there as well, and uh, so that that'll obviously be an experiment as well. Talbot yeah. had a, a great first year in Edmonton, as we know, yeah. and then uh, tailed off tailed quite off. a bit after that. I mean, the whole team did. It wasn't just Cam Talbot, but uh, but that'll be interesting as well. Uh, yeah, new goalie between the pipes. Uh, we'll see what Cam Talbot can do in his new home in Calgary, and that brings us to Edmonton, of course. James Neal headed up to Edmonton. We all, I think, are in agreement that he's going to have a bounce back here. I think so. I if I'm going if I was going to reach into the uh, <laughs> the Cabin Sports Radio vault of poor predictions, it would be that last year during this show I said James Neal is going to be a great player for the yeah. Calgary Flames. You can probably find that audio. It's there. I know it is. So I'm going to double down on that and say James Neal mm-hmm. is going to have a great year for the Edmonton Oilers. To be fair, he was fresh off a Stanley Cup playoff run when, That's right. when he was inked to that deal Looked very uh, with, good. with the Knights. And maybe you know some people are uh, attributing his poor season to the fact that he didn't get a full training camp. It was a long summer for him. He was playing well into June, yeah, almost July. Yeah. Um so maybe he didn't get the training camp or the preseason he wanted to and just didn't click. Things did not work out for him in Calgary. Projected as a starter right now. So he's going to be playing with the best player on the planet. Yeah. Uh so you figure that will probably boost his numbers a bit. We know he's an el- he can be an elite goal scorer. Mm-hmm. He's a good finisher and now he's going to be playing with the best playmaker in all of hockey. 
Um, I think the Oilers' power play is going to be scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the nice thing about uh, about James Neal for the Edmonton Oilers, too, is that if you didn't think you were getting anything out of Milan Lucic, like, you know, the, the occasional bit of grit, you're expecting James Neal to score at least 25 goals, especially if he's going yeah. to be playing with Connor McDavid. You're expecting no less than 25 you know, maybe like 35 plus if he if he has a really good year uh-huh. and stays healthy all year. We know he has the goal scoring skill to do it. He has the, the the offensive sense to do it. If he can put himself in the right positions with Connor McDavid, yeah, there should be no issue with him cracking the 30 goal roster. Plus, he adds a little bit of grit himself. So yep. you 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 not only have another weapon to put around to surround Connor McDavid with, but you add a bit more grit to their roster, which is also something that the Edmonton Oilers haven't had enough of. Mm-hmm. And you have a guy who went on a Stanley Cup run. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh I would take the over if uh let's set it at twenty. Twenty goals. 20. I would I would take the over. I would depending, definitely take the oh, over. Depending on how much he, he ends up playing with McDavid and, and we'll see how much McDavid plays with dry settle as well. Yeah. Crazy to think that both were in the top four in NHL scoring last year, yeah. second and fourth respectively. Mm-hmm. He put a fifty goal a really quiet fifty goals for yep. for dry settle last year. Um I think the story as it's been in the past, you've got the brilliance of Connor McDavid and Leon Dry Settle. Do you get the secondary scoring? Hopefully someone like Neil provides that. And do you have the team defense? You know, not yeah. not a lot of uh, a lot of changes made there for the Edmonton Oilers, but for some of their young guys, for a Darnell Nurse, you know, is this is this a year where you see him t- take a step forward and become a potential elite defenseman? Yeah. You know, who knows? Uh, they've got a few other players that uh, that obviously have have that kind of potential. But potential only gets you so far. Yeah. It only gets your fans' hopes up, really. Yeah. And so this is, uh, it's another interesting year for the Edmonton Oilers. And here's, here's the thing with the Oilers. Mike Smith struggled at times last year with the Flames with a stronger defensive core. He's got yeah. a weaker defensive yeah. core with the Oilers. I think he could be exposed. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that could get interesting. Yeah. So Miko Koskinen and uh, Mike Smith in Calgary and Talbot and Riddick. Holding down the fort in in Calgary. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. You know, it's just you, you can't you can't really predict anything concrete with the Edmonton Oilers yeah. anymore. It's just let yeah no let's let's just see what happens and just yeah let them play. Uh, finally, we move for the furthest west onto the coast with the Vancouver Canucks. I don't really know what to make of the Canucks this year. I honestly feel like they may surprise some people. Big question mark. They yeah. are they are a huge question mark, but they've got a lot of talent mm-hmm. on that team. Now, I don't know if they're in a situation to necessarily surprise anyone with their talent because Bo Horvat, Elias Peterson, uh, and um, Besser, and, and yeah, and Brock Besser. Everyone knows about these guys now. They know what they can do. They know they are potential elite scorers. They're going to have to find some secondary scoring. But are these guys good enough, and are they at a point in their development? I mean, Pedersen is only in his his second season, so who knows what's, what that's going to look like. You know, he looked good last year. He, <laughs> he looked incredible, like just brilliant at times last year. So we will see what, what he can do with a full, a full second season. Uh, Besser, if he can stay healthy, uh, throughout this year, we know he's got 30 goal potential, and Bo Horvat just gets better and better every year. He looks like he is, he looks like he could be a legit guy to be the center of the future of this yeah. team. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, he's a center, but also has elements of the power forward too. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I, I don't know. Like it's it's really interesting. Um, and, and then in goal, the, the Vancouver Canucks do, they, they got a pretty legit starting goaltender in, uh, in Mark Stroh. Yep. But has he established himself as, as an elite guy? Mm-hmm. I don't think he has yet. This will be kind of an opportunity for him to do that. So a bit, again, a, a big question mark yeah. in, uh, in Vancouver. But I, I do think, and, and I mean, you know, you went through the whole, the whole Sedin twins era and, they had their window, obviously. We know what happened there. Didn't get the job done. And then that window was just a slow, rusty, painful yeah. 
shut, closed. But then you've got now you've got this whole new era blossoming in yeah. Vancouver. And there was there was times last year when I mean throughout the Sedine era, I just personally I didn't find the Vancouver Canucks entertaining to watch. I know a lot of people, you know, it's the, the, the Sedin twins had a legacy. That's great. I didn't find them particularly entertaining to watch. Well, because when that line wasn't playing, it's news fast. Yeah. yeah. I think a team that is going to trend in the right direction, though, and, and a couple notable offseason acquisitions to JT Miller uh, from the yeah. Lightning, and you touched upon uh, Myers uh, from your, your Winnipeg Jets. There's potential there, and even yeah. on the blue line, there there is potential. Quinn Hughes, uh, rookie, Tanev, Myers, Edler, um, J T. Miller in the, in, the, in the mix now with uh, Peterson and, and Besser and Horvat, like you alluded to. They could be a fringe, maybe, maybe a fringe yeah. playoff team. My question, though, as with the Central, though, is you know there's X amount of playoff spots up for grabs. You know the Knights are going to be good. The Flames figure to be there. Um, even uh, the Coyotes could be a surprise team. You yeah. never know. So there's only so many playoff spots up for grabs. Uh, they'll be hard pressed to claim one of them. But I think a team that ultimately trending in the right direction. And good to see they got Besser locked up. He's healthy now too, so he'll be ready for the start of the season. Yeah, they could be fun to watch. At yeah. the very least, fun to watch. At the very least, and I mean that is something that you really haven't been able to say about the Vancouver yeah. Canucks for the last number of years. They're at least going to be exciting to watch and that'll do it for our regular season nhl preview gone just like that jay bear thank you so much for joining us on cabin sports radio thank you gentlemen and we will talk to you next week right here on cabin sports radio